Even if we manage to call home our Moscow cubicle with a view overlooking your childhood, the white wind that lives on the roofs of your city will rip us to warm and soft shreds. The street light will waltz to death, the snow mosquitoes gathered in its brightness, as if it is their first love, as if it is their last one, the one and only. A carpet hangs on the wall over the bed, Russian style. It repeats the icy weave on the window, as if all your strange friends flick the ash off their cigarettes, as if I don't give a damn about the old janitor screeching the snow with his shovel at six in the morning, as if we will finally do something wise. Now it's my turn to learn the intricacies of the married commune. Hiding out in the kitchen, drinking wine, scribbling about a boy who always cheated on tests, peeping out into the street, unwittingly imagining some kind of a Chernobyl pet standing against the window, throwing up its hands, its guacamoles, scratching the window with unnameable digits, and finally realizing, my poor big little brother, retarded through life, not by birth, Realizing he forgot his keys like he did the summer before and the summer before this one. He's just standing there, waving at me, to me. <clears throat> Our circumstances being identical, I wanted to leave, but couldn't. Which later became our secret tradition. When we needed to go, we stayed. Identical to the first time, when we stood and watched, as rain fell from the sky, hit the concrete and flowed and filled us with water. The rain fell on his face and I recognized him. It was a signal that we agreed on before, a signal that we were born in a city where water flows over lucid blocks, each with a person inside, where trees grow upside down, swinging like liquid masts, touching the concrete. This is the last one. Okay. <clears throat> the air around my head compresses as I stand smoking in the dark, absorbing wire trees, becoming what I am. Walking to the subway, I can stop now and unfasten that crumpled note from the asphalt and decipher its unreadable text. Lying next to her, I can reach out into the dark and touch my private daughter and be clandestine when she cries out in her sleep. Stay there with your nameless dog until you know words which you can turn to names, until you know words that can inflect your pain, until you know words that don't expire, so you can carve an alphabetic bridge out of yourself into another sleep. Stay in the wind that rips our skin to flags, revealing the pale structure hidden underneath, the blueprint for all things red and soft. Thank you.